jump straight in. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune condition that causes muscle weakness and gets progressively worse with activity and improves with rest. Interestingly, myasthenia gravis affects men and women at different ages. So a typical patient is either a woman under the age of 40 or a man over the age of 60. There's a strong link with myasthenia gravis and thymomas, which are tumours of the thymus gland. Around 10 to 20% of patients with myasthenia gravis will have a thymoma, and around 20 to 40% of patients with a thymoma will develop myasthenia gravis. Let's talk about the pathophysiology. First, we need to look at motor nerves and how they communicate with muscles. And this is done at something called the neuromuscular junction. At the neuromuscular junction, axons of the motor nerves are situated across a synapse from the postsynaptic membrane on the muscle cell. The axons release a neurotransmitter from the presynaptic membrane, and this neurotransmitter at these junctions is called acetylcholine. And this acetylcholine travels across the synapse and attaches itself to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. The acetylcholine stimulates the receptors and this leads to muscle contraction. So in order for the motor nerves to communicate with the muscle cells, they need to release acetylcholine and this needs to bind to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. In around 85% of patients with myasthenia gravis, acetylcholine receptor antibodies are produced by the immune system. And these antibodies bind to the postsynaptic neuromuscular junction receptors, or the acetylcholine receptors, and they block the receptors. And this prevents the acetylcholine from being able to stimulate the receptor and trigger muscle contraction. As the receptors are used more during muscle activity, more of them become blocked up. And this leads to less effective stimulation of the muscle with increased activity. There is more muscle weakness the more muscles are used. Hello, my name is Felicia Crawford and I'm currently a nursing student at Kaiser University. Today I'm gonna be doing my practicum on neostigmide, also known as prostigmin through the IV route. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is access the MAR so I can review my patient's profile. So today, my patient's name is Tanaya Thomas. She has been hospitalized for seven days. She's been prescribed neostigmine due to the fact that she was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis. We actually used a test dose called Edrophonium, also known as the Tensilon test, to diagnose her myasthenia gravis and she came back positive. Okay. So let's continue. I'm gonna perform my first medication check. So Tanaya Thomas, yes. Um, Neostigmine, yes. Um, five milligrams IV bolus push, yes. Push very slowly, yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna be pulling the medication. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to check if I have the correct syringe size. And it is correct because you always have to make sure that um, you have the appropriate size to distribute the medication. Then I'm going to check the vial for the expiration date to see if it's clear and if it's not intact. So it's clear and the expiration date is August 2027. So we're in luck. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is perform my calculations as needed. So here's the part where I do my math calculations and confirm that this is the right syringe and this is the right vial needed for the neostigmine administration. Then I'm going to open the vial and cleanse the port. So unfortunately I can't open this but I will cleanse the port. Then I'm going to inject air equal to the amount of withdrawal. So this is a new package so let me clean this. Administer it here. Perfect. So, since it's only five milligrams, I'm gonna check that it's, you can feel the air. 
Then I'm gonna turn it over and slowly inject the vial and slightly withdraw only up to five milligrams. There we go. I'm gonna tap the syringe to raise the air bubbles and slowly express them. So then I'm gonna withdraw the needle and express excess medication. So I'm gonna confirm the medication, um, the amount of milligrams needed to administer it. And I'm also gonna check that the syringe is working properly and just a little bit so you could see that it is working properly. And then I'm gonna confirm that the medication volume is good as I already did. And I'm gonna label the syringe with the medication name. So right here, I would get a permanent marker and put Neostigmine. I'm gonna perform my medication check number two. So let me go back. So we have um, Tania Thomas, correct? We have Neostigmine, correct? Five milligrams only, IV bolus, correct? And everything seems to be in intact for the medication label check number two. And now I'm gonna take the medication and um, the flush solution to the bedside. Good afternoon, ma'am. My name is Talisha Crawford and I'm gonna be your nurse for today. Good afternoon. Perfect. So the first thing I'm going to do is identify my patient. What's your name, love? Tanaya Thomas. And when were you born? July 24th, 2006. And do you know where you are right now? Yes, the hospital. Perfect. So I've already performed hand hygiene and I'm going to place the medication near her bedside. And the first thing I'm going to do is describe the medication to my patient. Do you know that you've been prescribed neostigmine? Yes. Okay, perfect. So basically, neostigmine is a medication used to stimulate muscle contractions, and it's also used to reverse severe muscle weakness. Okay. Perfect. So now I'm going to ask you a few questions regarding any contraindications, any interactions that you may have with this drug, because I do not want cholinergic crisis to occur, okay? Okay. Sounds good. So the first things first, um, I'm going to obtain your medical history. So I want to know, have you been taking any corticosteroids, cholinergic drugs, or are you taking any medication other than neostigmine that might interfere with the neostigmine? No. Perfect. Um, are you hypersensitive to cholinergic drugs at all? No. Perfect. Um, I'm going to name some diseases, and I would like for you to tell me whether or not you have them, because if so, then I won't be able to administer this medication. Sounds good? Yes. Perfect. So do you have bradycardia? No. Do you have history of bronchospasms? No. Do you have coronary artery disease? No. Do you have Parkinson? No. Do you have peptic ulcer disease? No. Do you have history of any seizures? No. And do you have hypothyroidism? No. Perfect. Sounds good. And you are all ready for administration. So the first thing I'm going to do before I administer it, um, neostigmine is assess her vital signs. So this is where I'm going to assess her heart rate, her blood pressure, her O2 to make sure that I can administer this medication. So her vitals came back clear and she's ready for administration. So I've already identified the medication. I mean, I already identified my patient and the first thing I'm gonna do is perform my medication check number three. So here's where I perform it. So your name is Tanaya Thomas, correct? Yes. You've been prescribed neostigmine? Yes and um, you've been prescribed five milligrams IV bolus, correct? Yes. Perfect. So unfortunately, I do not have um, an IV or the bag, so I'm gonna just list the steps that you would do if I did have the bag. So the first thing I would do is confirm the, pa um, the, patency, the patency by assessing and aspirating for blood return. And then I'm going to gently flush the IV with sterile normal saline using the appropriate size of syringe. Then I'm going to inspect and palpate the site for any occlusion, infiltration, or venous irritation. And she's all good. Then here is where I'll cleanse the injection port and then I'll allow the port to dry. I'm going to secure the appropriate size of syringe to the leuco port and then I'm going to inject the syringe. I'm going to inject the syringe so the medication into the line at an appropriate rate, which is five milligrams IV bolus. I'm gonna push this medication very slowly because that's an administration alert for neostigmine. I'm gonna dispose of this syringe. I'm gonna cleanse the injection port once again. 
And now I'm gonna flush with normal sterile saline. And then the last thing I'm gonna do, if needed, is secure a saline lock clamp, but in this case, it's not needed. Thank you very much and have a nice day. You too.